Hello and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino. Most people may think sturgeon farming and caviar production happens overseas, but most of it really occurs all over the United States, with more than three-fourths of the nation's caviar production happening in Northern California, like right here in Wilton. This is our Nikolai Sturgeon Ranch and we are the nation's only certified sustainable sturgeon farm in the United States. South of Sacramento, most people don't think of the capital of the country, uh, but that's okay, we're kind of like a hidden gem here. This unassuming location is the largest sturgeon farm in America. Less than five miles from the rivers, the sturgeon naturally inhabit. One of the unique things that people often don't recognize is uh, caviar farming now goes on all over the world. Uh, it started right here in Sacramento County. So Czar Nikolai represents one of the oldest farms in the world uh, with the help of UC Davis back in 1984 is when we really broke ground and started the process of aquaculture. You know, proving that in the right environment, sturgeon could uh, grow amazing caviar in a farm setting. But sturgeon farming in caviar making is a slow food. The work we do today will realize in about 2030, uh, six, seven year old sturgeon, sometimes eight year old sturgeon produce caviar. Only the females are the prize sturgeon that produce caviar. Unfortunately for males like myself, we're semi-useless at the farm. Uh, we have about one purpose here, and that's really to make our way to the smokehouse. Um, so everything is a labor of love. Even the gender of our fish, we figure out about two and a half, three years with the uh, university's help. Female. And we're raising these fish as responsibly as possible. What does that mean? We're antibiotic, we're hormone free, uh, we're heavy metal free, we're feeding, we're feeding sturgeon you know, what they would eat in the wild. So we have a custom feed, which is no land-based proteins. They're eating algaes, planktons, crustaceans, they're, you know, bottom feeders, they're omnivores. So we're trying to give them, you know, what they'd really enjoy. And as you can kind of hear from behind me, uh, the sounds of nature. And really, that's really our goal here. Treat them how they would be in their natural environment. We're there, we have the parent sturgeon and we do our spawning and those cylinders are filled with hundreds of thousands of eggs. So how old are these guys? These are literally like five days old. Sturgeon in the wild have been carbon dated to live 60, 100 years. When you're dealing with a white sturgeon, this is the second largest freshwater fish in the world. Uh, our brood stock, which are like the parents of the farm, could be eight feet long. They can weigh 200, 250 pounds. Darwin referred to them as a living artifact. They are a dinosaur fish, if you will. Um, there are no bones, there's no teeth. So they're evolutionary. And here, their commitment to sustainability includes investing in the future and innovation. We have a lot of firsts that go on here. So there's a lot of like water conservation, energy conservation. Uh, behind you guys is an organic greenhouse, which we started in about 2016. That was the first sturgeon powered uh, greenhouse in the world, if you will, and it produced organic produce. And behind me is actually hyacinth. This is the original method. This is mother nature's organic biofilter. These are like plants that float on, you know, tops of rivers and streams and they have roots that go all the way to the bedrock and they filter the sturgeon affluent streams. So we do about 20% of our energy through solar currently and we broke ground earlier this year on an RES system. What that means is the original farm was about 30 uh, tanks and two gigantic ponds with about a million gallons of water. The new system has 54 tanks and eliminated the use of ponds. It's a zero discharge system. Uh, it only needs replenishment for the uncovered zones for evaporation. And that saves about a million gallons of water a year. It's a high quality vision they practice in both their farming and food production. A bunch of different grades. We have six of them from our classic all the way up to our exotic crown jewel. We encourage you to start at our entry levels, our classics estate. They're amazing flavors of caviar. You know, our signature flavor is salted sea butter. So if you're a fan of freshly salted sea butter, you have your favorite sort of, you know, tuna belly sort of flavors, that's really what caviar is all about. It's subtle, it's delicious, it's mild, it's buttery, it's unctuous. Give it a try, or you know what, if you're not as, you know, adventurous for caviar just yet, try our smoked sturgeon. Our smoked sturgeon pate tastes like uh, bacon of the sea dip, if you will. There are ingredients you can uh, pronounce, there are limited ingredients in all of our items, but you know, honestly, the caviar here grown locally is very inspired. It's a delicious item and it's as good as anything else that's produced in the world. And go figure, this is where it really began as far as the farm caviar movement. So, you know, take pride in local, give it a try and uh, you'll, you'll be pretty impressed. 